are interested in controlling the cell cycle because all cancers eventually have a problem with cell cycle control. So we specifically use an inhibitor that's inhibiting CDK4 and CDK6, which then we can intentionally stop the cells in the middle of the G1 phase and use that as a mechanism to reprogram tumor cells to make them much more vulnerable. And the reason we can do that is when we stop the cells intentionally at the middle of G1, only the genes programmed in early G1 will be transcribed. All the genes beyond that will not. And that sets up an imbalance in gene expression. And that renders tumor cells very vulnerable to the second drug. And it's a good way to do time sequence a combination therapy. The other part of the corn is that controlling the cell cycle also control T cells and other immune cells. So we can then tap into the advantage of using immune cells to also help to control the cancer. And the third important strategy is to understand human cancer. We believe we need to uh, analyze each patient one by one, longitudinally, with time. That's the only way we can understand what is the driver and what is the consequence. And that's the strategy we took. So we have um, developed uh, this CDK4-6 inhibitor for cancer therapy called palpocyclic. And now there are many others, and this drug is used uh, extensively in breast cancer. So what we find may also go beyond the lymphoid malignancy. And that's the essence of the strategy and the rationale. Yes, what we have found was that uh, how the cells respond to this, we have designed uh, two therapies and phase one and phase two are completed. And in phase one, uh, combining the pelvocyclic with ibutinib we have patients who are in complete remission in the ninth year, which is quite durable. Um, Ibutinib in other cases lasts about three, four years. That's one thing. The second thing is by longitudinal single cell analysis, we sort out which population is responsible for the resistance and what the transcription program. And with that, we know the reason that we have durable clinical response is due to the cooperation between stopping the cells, tumor cells from cycling, and uh, continue the T cell surveillance. When a patient progressed or relapsed from this therapy, the first thing we saw was a dramatic depletion of CD8 T cells. And we further know that the loss of T cells it's due to loss of effective memory T cells. We further now have figured out what the crosstalk between the tumor and the T cells. And the loss of T cells is actually driven by cytokines secreted by the tumor cells. I just want to add that the, the longitudinal single cell analysis, we believe is the most powerful way to identify drivers. Because if one take only just two samples, beginning and the end, it's impossible to sort out what's a driver and what's a passenger. So that was one point. The other is we believe that the cell cycle control in the tumor microenvironment may not be limited to mental cell lymphoma. That's a disease we focus on. Uh, I think it's going to be shared by other lymphoid malignancy as well. Although each disease we have its own specific variation, but I, we believe the general theme might be similar.